after the falling of mortality's cloak, lightened is its weight to heighten its ascent. Refined to the touch of finer environments, it drops all pattern poles of denser stuff, cancels the grip of a descending pool, and bears the soul from world to higher world. Still in the naked ether of the peaks, the spirit's simplicity alone is left. The eternal being's first transparent road. But when it must come back to its mortal load and the hard ensemble of earth's experience, then its return resumes that heavier dress. For long before earth's solid vest was forged by the technique of the atomic void, a lucent envelope of self-disguise was woven around the secret spirited things. The subtle realms from those bright sheets are made. This wonder world, with all its radiant boom of vision and inviolate happiness, only for expression cares and perfect form. Fear on its peaks, it is dangerous nether plains. Its light draws towards the verge of nature's lapse. It lends beauty to the terror of the gulfs and fascinating eyes to perilous gods, invests with grace the demon and the snake. Its trance imposes earth's in conscience. Immortal it weaves for us, death somber robe, and authorizes our mortality. This medium serves a greater consciousness. A vessel of its concealed autocracy, it is a subtle ground of matter's worlds. It is the immutable in their mutable forms. In the folds of its creative memory, it guards the deathless type of perishing things. Its lowered potencies found our fallen strengths. Its thought invents our recent ignorance. Its sense fathers our body's reflexes. Our secret breath of untried mightier force, the lurking sun of an instance in a sight, its fine suggestions are a covered fount for our iridescent rich imaginings, touching things common with transfiguring hues, till even earth's mud grows rich and warm with the skies, and a glory gleams from the soul's decadence. Its knowledge is our error's starting point. Its beauty dawns our mud mask ugliness. Its artist good begins our evil stay. A heaven of creative truths above, a cosmos of harmonious dreams between, a chaos of dissolving forms below. It plunges, lost in our inconscient face, out of its fall our denser matter came. Thus taken was God's plunge into the night. This fallen world became a nurse of souls inhabited by concealed divinity. A being awoke and lived in the measureless void. A worldwide nation's strove towards life and thought, a consciousness plucked out from mindless sleep. All here is driven by an insentient will. Thus fallen, inconscient, frustrated, dense, inert, sunk into inanimate and torpid drowse, earth lay a drudge of sleep, forced to create by a subconscient yearning memory, left from a happiness dead before she was born, 
an alien wonder on a senseless breast. This Maya must harbor the orchid and the rose. From a blind, unwilling substance must emerge a beauty that belongs to happier spheres. This is the destiny bequeathed to heart. As if a slain god left a golden trust to a blind force and an imprisoned soul. An immortal goddess perishable parts she must reconstitute from fragments lost, reword from a document complete elsewhere, a doubtful title to her divine name. Her residue, her sole inheritance, to all things she carries in a shapeless dust. Her giant energy tied to pity forms in the slow tentative motion of her power, with only frail, blunt instruments for use. She has accepted as a nature's need and given to man as his stupendous work a labor to the gods impossible. A life living hardly in a field of death, its portion claims of immortality. A brief, half conscious body serves as means, a mind that must recover a knowledge lost, held in stone grip by the world's inconscience. And wearing still these countless knots of law, a spirit bound, stand up as nature's king.